uh, beer brewing 101. I'm not going to get real technical here. We've got our malt area there. Malt is the basic ingredient in, in beer. It's uh, malted barley is barley that's been subjected to um, some modification through steeping, germination, and kilning. What we're trying to do is we're trying to emulate nature on uh, getting that kernel ready to make a little barley plant. So we uh, put it in warm water, steep it, we soften up the starches, get the enzymes generated, and then when it starts turning from starch to sugar to make a little barley plant, we kind of steal its lunch. So we kiln it at that time, we drive it off, drive the moisture off, and that's malt. So the difference between barley and malt, or wheat and malted wheat, um, is that process. So we've got 1,500 pounds of malt coming in. We grind it up, uh, not too fine, and you'll, you'll like this. Uh, it mixes with warm water, and we hold that water at a certain temperature, about 153 degrees Fahrenheit, that activates those enzymes that uh, break down the starch molecules into malt sugar. So that's all that happens there. It takes about an hour. Uh, we, we pump that whole porridge-like mash into this vessel, and if you get a chance to peek at it, it's got a slotted bottom, so it's a false bottom. It's a strainer, and it separates the soluble wort. Um, so we take that wort, and as it's going through the screen, we pump it into the kettle behind you. Just a big steam-heated pot. We bring it up to a boil. And during the loudering, it's called loudering, it's a German word that means to clarify, it catches the little particles of husk and protein and stuff that we don't want in the kettle. Uh, the husk itself acts as a, a natural filter bed and it clarifies that wort, making a, a clean product to make the beer out of. So otherwise it'd be real uh, stringent and gummy. So if you're talking about intelligent design, <laughs> that's proof positive. <laughs> so. Um, then when we get into the kettle, uh, we bring it up to a boil, and you got that malt sugar solution. We add hops during the boil and it uh, extracts bitter resins that balance the sweetness from the malt and also aromatic oils that give beer its characteristic savory qualities. Um, so we use 17 different varieties of hops because each one is different. It's like the spice in beer. Without any spices, beer would be kind of bland and insipid. So hops became the predominant spice about 200 and some odd years ago because it was found that it had a preservative uh, antibacterial quality as well as having a nice elegant bitterness. So the, the hopped wort now is transferred through, uh, it's a plate heat exchanger and uh, we chill the, the wort from boiling temperature to about room temperature on its way to one of the fermentation tanks. In the tanks, the yeast uh, is a little uh, unicellular uh, plant that likes to eat sugar and it uh, produces ethanol and carbon dioxide. Uh, I use a very time-honored traditional uh, carbonation uh, technique and what I do is those tanks are pressurated so I'll, I'll close it up towards the end of fermentation and trap that CO2 that's being emitted by the yeast. So it results in a very fine, smooth conditioning and texture rather than uh, most of the large brewers just let it go flat, filter it, and then jam it with artificial carbonation, but it's not as elegant, it's not as smooth. I prefer to take the extra trouble to do it that way. So after fermentation, you've got, the, you've got carbonated, there's yeast all over the place, so you, uh, these are all jacketed with cooling solution that runs throughout the brewery. We've got a chiller in the back that's sending cooling solution that, that uh, runs on the jackets. That allows us to, to control the temperature, 
and after fermentation we bring the temperature down there's a ripening period where the yeast is actually reabsorbing some of the com um, constituents it made while it was actively fermenting and that cleans the beer up so beer does have a, an aging uh, period and then we drop the yeast out when it's done its job the cones in those cylinder conical tanks allow us to harvest the yeast and we'll actually reuse the yeast from from tank to tank about five generations and then we start fresh and then uh, we filter it so we take out the uh, suspended yeast except for some of the beers we leave um, unfiltered like the hefeweizen and wheat beers sometimes uh, you'll leave a little yeast in it um, and then from there it goes into a tank just a receiving tank and then we'll make kegs or pipe it over into packaging and put it into bottles and cans and then out to you. So the first uh, release is Tennessee Blonde. It's a very delicate uh, light ale. So if you guys, I'm getting thirsty from talking. If you're getting thirsty from listening, let's go have a little sip. <laughs>